I'm joined by Rob Hopti. You all probably know him on his great British kind of well, it's it's a British blog, but he does American beauty, he does he does beers from all over the world. Um so hello Rob, how are you doing? I'm very good, Simon, how are you? Not too bad, thank you, not too bad. Um we were both um very kindly sent some Adnams beers. We had them both on the same day, we've been doing a bit of tweeting. So we got together and thought, why not do a live review? Uh, what we got, Rob? Um, we've got these two new beers. Uh, essentially, they look like a brand new brand for, uh, from Adnams. The beers are going to be looking at our Innovation, which is their, I guess, their American style IPA. And it's been around for a while. It's won a load of awards for various things. And then another one, which is a brand new one to me, which is called Clump Sagging. It's a rye IPA. And I mean, I was just saying, Sam, before I came on here, in, uh, this Jack brand is um, kind of seen as Adnan's um, ke exclusive keg range. I mean, uh, but the actual brand is quite a historic brand for Adnan's. It's something that they did years ago and then they're reviving at the moment. And I think, that, I think it's a fantastic looking bottle as well. I mean, it kind of looks historical, but it also looks quite modern as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, you were saying in your in your workplace you've got a fifty year old bottle of Jack Brand. So is yeah, that well, I, revived. Yeah, actually, I, I, I'm I'm not hundred percent on how old it is, but we were doing doing a project and we were going through the uh, the basement and looking for old bits of kind of packaging and stuff. And we've got a lot of old beer bottles. It's all kind of connected to the railway in some shape and form. And I found a bottle of Adam's. Um, Jack Brand, so I was, he was quite excited. I was like, "Buy me, how old's that? <laughs> What's Super the collection? Brilliant. I don't know." But yeah, and I, but I tweeted it to Adams and they said, "I think they, they they keep cropping up all over the world these these vintage bottles." Sadly, it was empty. <laughs> well, um, I'm kind of it's probably about 32 degrees in the UK today, and then it's absolutely sweltering. It is. I, this is going to be my first beer of the day, so I'm going to hopefully crack this beer open and share a beer with Rob. Check out Rob's beer blog, um, www.youtube.com forward slash Hopscene. And Twitter is Hopscene. Yep. Uh, so we go with a clump sagging first. Yeah, yeah. So uh, do you want to tell us about this one, Simon? Yes, the uh, a rye IPA described as a Jack Brand craft beers. The little thing we make when we're not making Adams and want to try something or just try something, yeah, well, a, a little bit different. But why on earth is this fine rye IPA called Lump Sagging, we hear you ask? Well, it's a little tribute to one of the people who made us what we are today, the moustached Starwood of 1923 Brewery Tug-of-War team, <laughs> Mr. George Clump Sagging, a fine ale that's robust, smooth, and full-bodied, just like old George and his fine moustache. <laughs> Let's go. So yeah, I'll set this open. Okay, beer pouring out. For me, classic rye coloured or rye coloured coloured IPA. Yeah, um, kind of like a perfect clarity. I mean, these these are, these are the filtered beers are Adams, which you I mean if you know how to filter a beer properly, that's it's no bad thing. I mean, so absolutely pin bright, a really nice shiny, kind of chestnutty colour for me. Yeah, absolutely. Touch of red, touch of kind of amber in there maybe. Absolutely. Um, it it looks kind of like a keg beer, doesn't it? And I know there's a kind of raging debate in the UK about real ale versus real keg or whatever they want to call it. I'm I'm all I'm really really. I was speaking to Sue Hayward last month from the Rock Wine Brewery, and we were both in just a utmost agreement with, with craft keg, how kind of good the beers are now from it. For me, it's all about, does the beer taste good? Exactly. You can you exactly. can serve it in a dirty old nappy. As long as it tastes good, that's all that matters. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice, kind of, quite a, quite a sudsy, bubbly head. Good consistency, and also when you agitate it, it comes back as well, which is nice. Yeah, I'll give mine a whirl in a bit once I empty my glass a little bit. I'm I'm showing off my my brand new um, um, IPA glasses from from Spiegelau. Oh, nice. so of my birthday the other day, but yeah, they, they were they were made in conjunction with Sierra Nevada and Dogfish Head, so yeah, it's meant to kind of be the perfect glass for an IPA. So 
I thought, why not? Why not use it for a Rye IPA? Anyway, so we're going to check out the aroma. Yeah, let's get the aroma. Cheers. Mmm. That smells fantastic. It does. It smells lovely. Nice and sweet, but I'm picking up a lot of hop character as well. Nice bitterness. Yeah, um, I'm getting. I shouldn't a really say bitterness in aroma. Apologies there. I mean, it's yeah, a kind of like a, a nice um, roasted chestnut. Um, mm. Obviously, rye, rye bread. It goes without saying. Yeah, yeah. Maybe blood orange in there as well. Absolutely, yeah. De I, yeah, I was going to say like a like a definite kind of you bitten into an orange. I get quite a lot fruity. of fruity. Yeah, I get a lot of red apple. Which I don't know. Might be speaking of kind of um, English hops. Maybe mm. some English hops. I don't because we don't know where. I don't know what hops are in this, but I'm saying maybe some English hops and definitely. Um, I think you're looking at some, maybe some crystal malt, something like that. I think you're getting the smell of crystal malt. Are you picking up a little bit of centennial in there? Ooh. I'm not getting any discernible kind of hop aromas. It, it's it's more of this kind of just a general kind of fruity kind of thing going on, and also the for me the most prominent thing is that kind of sweetened kind of candy floss um, kind of. Um, yeah, as I said, kind of red apple kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, actually, just then. Yeah, I got, it's kind of tucked away. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, kind of juicy orange, maybe. Smart. Yeah, like it a does. satsuma or something. It smells fantastic. Are you ready to it dive does. in? Yeah, let's dive in. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh. That's fantastic. First beer of the day, and it's it's a reviver, mm. isn't it? It really mm. is. That's lovely. Definitely got a load of toffee to start with, but then as it pro progresses, those hops start coming, and that bitterness starts coming. I find it quite a prickly bitterness. It's quite a, it's quite a decent, full-on bitterness. Not aggressive, not too kind of like stringent. It's nice, but it is quite assertive. What about that rye? You picking up any of that rye in there? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'd say it's in the form of a combination of, as, as you'd expect, kind of toasted rye bread, kind of pumpernickel, that kind of thing, and yeah. um, and then and white pepper for me. Yeah, a, a definite spiciness. Um, loads of bready malts in the middle of the, of the palate as well. Nice kind of, as you say, a kind of prickly bitterness on the back end. It really amps up, doesn't it? On yeah. the back end. That's, that kind of nice lulling sweetness starts off. And then it, it just sit there and then um, kind of chew on it. It really starts building and building and starts to be getting really quite nicely bitter. And uh, again, hmm. the sweetness for me up front. Yeah. Nice and sweet. Yeah, not kind of overly sweet. Um, um, what would I say? Yeah, once again, a bit of that red apple. Um, toffee, sugary toffee. Yeah. Kind of like a caramel that you'd make in a pan. I mean, get a bit of, get, get a pan and get some um, get some sugar in there and kind of get it on the hob. And just, just as it's kind of melted, just as it's turning that colour, so as it's getting a little bit darker, it's that kind of, Thing. Very drinkable as well. Really pleased that it's um, it's a very distinctive beer, isn't it? It's something mm. which you would say, oh, do you know what? I could have this as my first beer of the day. It's uh, it's five percent. It's very kind of it's sessionable ABV. I'd say yeah, it's um, I'm I'm if this is coming from their new Adam's got a new craft brewery, haven't they? If, oh, I don't yes. know. Okay. They put it in in January. Mm -hmm. So with a few test brews, this could very well be coming from their kind of craft plant. And if this is what's coming from Adnams, then, then I'm pleased. I'm pleased. Yeah, it's, it's one of the more bitter beers I've ever had from Adnams, to be honest. 
It's still very balanced, as you'd expect. Still very nicely rounded. But that, that light bitterness that comes in, I, I don't think I can think of any other Adnams beer that has had that much of a hot, hot bitterness. I mean, something like Goshi has got a lovely uh, hot flavour and loads of aroma, but it's, it's very balanced. It's got a, quite a lot of sweetness in it. But this is really kind of... It kind of mm. comes at you at the back end, and it's like a, quite a big, bitter um, grapefruit for me. Yeah, yeah. It, it's almost as if, um, for me, they've been... They've been playing around with American hops. They, they did the Ghost Ship. They did the Innovation a few years ago, um, which they've re-brewed. We're going to be reviewing next. But then they moved on to their American style IPA. I never had that. You never, you never tried that. That was, that was nice. But for me, this is like another step up. This is they've had a little bit of a play round, and now they've gone right. Let let's let's go for it in the in the craft plant. And yeah, I, I'm ready to give this. I'm ready to give this an eight out of ten. Absolutely, yeah. I think eight out of ten is spot on. I mean, for me, it, it reminds me a lot of ways of Stone's um, Levitation. It's got that. I know it's a rye IPA, but it's 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 bridging that gap of kind of amber ale, like a big hop to West Coast amber ale for me. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll join you an eight. I've, you cannot fault it. At all. I tell you what, I just picked up on the back end was um, a kind of a toffee apple sensation. Have you got that apple, and then you and then it's the, the kind of layered toffee apple kind of flavour on top. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Um, and thankfully, we chose this well one first. Done. Well done on the clump sagging from Adnams. Yes. Keep an eye out for it in the if it hits the shops. It might be one of these where they put it in beers of Europe or they put it with a couple of the other small specialist stores and then hope for a supermarket release. But yeah, look out for it. It's a good beer. And de and you can you'll definitely be able to get it off of Adnams' website as well. So of course, yes, yes. And I mean, I completely. I mean, I would definitely buy more of that. And I'm not just saying it because it came for free. <laughs> yeah. It is. I mean, as I said, I've done. I think it's the most bitter beer I've ever had from Adnams. And it, as you, you were saying, it kind of, it's kind of, seems to be. If this is what they're going to be doing in the future, it, say, it seems like this. It's the next stage. The movement to that next level. The moving towards um, flavors that aren't always, and kind of drinking experiences that aren't always something for everybody. I mean, I mean, not. I'm not saying everybody's going to like this because it is bitter. And if yeah. you're if you're an Adnams bitter drinker or a broadside drinker, this is going to be quite quite different because it's got a lot of bitterness. As I said, still very balanced, still very drinkable. But I think this, if this is kind of like a, a sign of things to come, it's pretty exciting. Adams have always done good stuff, but I'm that's that is really nice. Yeah, yeah. And this one now uh, we're going to be moving on to the Adnams innovation. This is something I've had. A couple of years ago, in uh, a pint bottle, if you like, a, a British pint bottle. I think that's twenty, is it twenty ounces. Yeah, and it's been I, a very I, good beer. So I'm, I'm looking to see what it's like in a three thirty from the craft plant. I've only got one glass with me, so I'm going to finish mine. It's got proper real ale guide style. That's right. Yeah. We always, we always finish the pint on the real <laughs> ale guide. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. There you go. So that one, that's one done. At least one of us is going to finish his glass. Yeah, I, I'd uh, just saying before I come on here, I had a big fish and chip dinner before <laughs> I come on, and I'm kind of, oh! <laughs> <laughs> right. So, yeah, quite a dramatic, different kind of branding for innovation, isn't it? I mean, yeah, totally, yeah. Because um, Adnams won a load of awards when they first released innovation for the packaging. I think both graphic design and kind of the their use of um, uh, sustainable packaging and things like that. They won loads of awards when it first came out. So I mean, despite being very iconic, it looked always looked very different to the rest of the Adams range. Um, but as it really stood out, and I think it's, I'm quite surprised that they've um, that they've completely rebranded it. Cause I, I was told it's quite iconic for them. I think when Zach. Something it was something about Zach Zach Avery um, who, who wrote um, he wrote a British beer beer book in, in the past. Um, when he when I watched his YouTube channel, him reviewing it, it was either in a cork bottle or he pulled it out of a cardboard box. It came out of a cardboard box. I, I remember that video vividly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, this this is 
two to three years on, this is Adnan's innovation. Yeah, it's six point seven percent ABV. Yeah, I, ne I never remember it being that strong. Yes, yeah, I think yeah, I think it was pushing that, was. that ABV. But yeah, but once again, absolutely pin bright as you expect. I think it suits a three thirty bottle as well as six point seven percent beer. Oh right, yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Sometimes a five hundred, you might, well, for some people, not myself, but <laughs> <laughs> might be a bit kind of like put off, especially on the supermarket shelves. Mm. I mean, me and you, I mean, we we drink a lot of quite a strong beer, but for, for for the average beer drinker who might go and buy get by ghost ship and broadside and stuff like that, I and mean, this is a strong beer. But a lovely colour as well, lovely, I mean, absolutely pin bright, golden, looks how an IPA should, really. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, looks lovely. I'm ready to dig my nose into this one. Oh, yeah. Mm, lovely. Oh, I've got a, um, got a kind of barrel, wood barrel aging nose to this. I know what you mean, I know what you mean, it's got, it's, it's got a... Like it's fresh oak barrel, I think. Mm. It's not. It's not as. It's not as vanilla-y as you mean an actual oak, oak aged beer is. I don't know. I wonder if it's. Oh, I don't know. I'm just kind of cooking up things in my own mind. But um, I wonder if it's kind of. Is it trying to, because of this old look of beer? Is it trying to, um, have the. Uh, this idea of it being potentially an old beer, which was only an old wood, wooden barrel or something. I don't know. I think I'm just making it up in my head, to be honest. Smells great. Smells yeah. great. Yeah. It, it, it's it, definitely it, it, that kind of like... Picking up maybe like a Belgian-style IPA. I'm not sure. Yeah, the forefront is definitely, on the, as you said, kind of oaky, vanilla, mm. slightly clove and banana. Yeah. Uh, one thing that... Um, Terry K says green bananas. Green bananas. I mean, so it's Back not, not banana-y, but it's still yeah. slightly, still quite, you know, that cr those crunchy bananas. Yeah. But then that drops off, and then it does become a bit more like you'd expect, actually. On the first sniff, it's always it's always that, and that jumps forward. But it that drops out. Oh, um, I'm ready to go with this one. It's Absolutely. Not my mouth. Yeah. It's alive going. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try it, Rob. Cheers. But it doesn't taste anything like it smells. No. That's really crazy. It tastes like exactly how you expect it to. And like I got I'm picking up a like a spicy dry sensation on the back end. Yeah. Similar kind of bitterness to that. It's got it's quite prickly. Um, this time I'd say it's it's quite fresh pine, but not a resinous pine. No, um, it's and um, lemon, lemon lemon flesh, bit of um, lime zest, fleshy grapefruit. I'm getting. Yeah, yeah. But it's that experience of putting the glass up to your mouth as you're taking a, a swig. You get a bit of that aroma, which I it's kind of like confusing me. I'm going. Oh, oh, it smells a bit like a like a, a vice beer or something. And then you taste it, and it's like, no, it's IPA, I and mean, it's a really nice IPA. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wonder. I wonder if it's. Fruit? I, I, I wonder how fresh these bottles are because I'm thinking, is it because they're like really fresh? There's something a bit f funny going on between the kind of um, the sugars or something like this, and. I mean, I've had this numerous times with uh, Brudos Punk IPA. See, sometimes, it, and Magic Rocks and Curious on keg, not on keg, on cask, when it's fresh, it's a bit, there's sort of, always a bit kind of weird going on, and then you taste it and you go, oh yeah, it's, yeah. It, I mean, it's perfect, but that aroma, it kind of threw me a bit then. It, it's, it's a clean, dry, nice, kind of juicy, Tasty beer, it really is. It's got a, quite a lot of body as well. Yeah, nice. Um, I'd say a little buttery body, a kind of yeah, nice medium. Absolutely, mouth, absolutely, quite buttery. I didn't like to say because buttery's got 
bad connotations on it. I know what but, you're saying, yeah. But it, it's that it's that texture of kind of melted butter. You see, you've, you've, you've got, got your toast and you've buttered it. Your toast is still nice and hot, like it's melted your butter. Yeah. You take a bite and it's got yeah, it's got that kind of that oily, slick kind of buttery thing going on. Mm. Do you want to give the, the back of the bottle a read on this one? <laughs> no, no, it, well, it, it starts off with virtually the same as the other one does. Yada, 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 doing something a little bit better. Uh, it says, but what's the story of this bottle of uh, st uh, stupidly hoppy IPA you're holding? Upon op opening our new brewery, um, Jonathan declared we should have a beer to celebrate, of course. He didn't see uh, just see what was lurking in the back of the fridge. Oh, no. He and the team set about creating one, and this was uh, what they came up with. So I guess it's it was celebrating. I mean, as a lot of fantastic beers, are, I mean, I shouldn't mention it, but, I mean, um, Thwaites, I mean, you can kind of see what's going on. I mean, these bigger regional breweries getting a good idea and, and kind of celebrating the fact that um, – been been freed from the shackles of kind of co yeah. of, of kind of brewing a lot of beer. It's, I mean, and all brewers are brewers, and and they love what they do. And sometimes you might think, well, yeah, you know, it's a business. We've got to make a lot of products. But sometimes you just got to have a bit of fun and make a beer that you really like. And I think that's yeah. the kind of beer, as it says on the back of the bottle, they this is the kind of beer they wanted. And I mean, you've sp spoken to brewers in the past, and I mean, they all say I started a brewery because. I wanted to brew beer that I wanted to drink. Yeah, and that's the and first thing they say. And this is clearly what they they've done here. The shack for me, the shackles have come off. With these, say as you say, these larger breweries, they they they're investing in smaller micros. They've got so much room to play with from what they, pardon me, from what they used to kind of working with. Absolutely. Yeah, you. you... They, they're scared to get things wrong when it's when there's so many amounts of bags of malt and stuff going into the to a brew. Absolutely, and you've got you've, you've got to consider your brand. You've, when people walk into Morrison's and pick up a bottle of Broadside, that's going to be the same as it was the week before. Because yeah. that's what that customer is expecting. And I mean, I'm sure, I, I've, never, I've, I've not done it myself, but when you're doing that day in, day out, you, I'm sure it's bubbling away in the back of your mind, all this creativity, I want to get out, I want to do this, I want to, I want to make a, a right IPA, and I want to make a proper, like, a proper kind of like American style IPA. And that's great that um, these breweries are getting the opportunity to do that because they shouldn't, they don't always have to be a kind of like a, 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 like a definite kind of difference between making a lot of it and making good, look at making good beer. I mean, look at, look at Stone, look at, look at Sierra Nevada, look at um, Sam Adams. They are huge. I mean, you could fit Adnams like 18 times into one of Sierra Nevada's size or something like that. But yeah, you shouldn't. I mean, size doesn't. Well, I've I've heard this numerous times. Size doesn't mean that it's bad beer. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, totally. Okay. Um, just to wrap up on the Adams innovations, what what is your final thoughts on it, Rob? Um, it's a it's a funny one, because um, the first one we had was fantastic. I was really impressed by that, and. There's something. It's that it's the aroma which is kind of throwing me, and I and I'm like, oh, what's what's all that about? It shouldn't smell like that. Because when you taste it, it doesn't taste like you're expecting when you smell it. So oh, it's, a, it's it's difficult. I'm oh, I'm going. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a spanner in the works now because it's not gonna fit within your um, scale, rating scale. I'm going seven point two. Because <laughs> I don't think it, I don't think it's a seven beer because I think that's been harsh. But it's not, an, and I gave the other one an eight, and I don't think it's as good as that because of that aroma is a bit odd. And the, I'm not sure if I'm in love with the butteriness. I like the body, but I don't know if I like the buttery quality. For me, this is. Um, I if I was to take a guess, I'd say this is the first beer they put through the plant. The new craft beer plant, they know the beer, they know the recipe, they know what is going to come out, mm -hmm. and they probably played a little bit safe with this particular beer. You're right, it was it was the first beer released as part of this range, so yeah. 
Ah, right, okay. I, 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 mm. I didn't know that. I'm just taking a yeah, wild was. guess at that. But, no, you're right. Because it's something that I probably would do if I if I had a recipe. I, I knew it. I, I just stay, stay safe for once. Absolutely. I think, personally, they've used quite a few British hops in this, and they've used a lot of it. I, um, mm. You do pick up the American hoppiness of it, but I think it's been hopped up American style with British hops, if that makes sense. Any sense? So I'm gonna give this a seven. I'm gonna give it a seven. But definitely the clump sa sagging or saging was a very, very. It was a top quality beer. Yeah, this one. Uh, I'm. I just joined Rob with this one. I just think it. I probably fine tune it a little bit. Yeah, it's it is very nice, but there's something not quite right. Yeah, yeah. Superb, superb. Um, Rob, thank you very much for joining me on this live hangout on air. Um, cool. Thank you to the viewers for watching. Um, I believe you can watch the hangout afterwards if you yeah. want to. Yeah, so, so enjoy if you watch it in the future. Um, again, Rob is hopscene.com on his blog, um, youtube.com forward slash hopscene, Facebook and Twitter, exactly the same. Many thanks for joining me, Rob, and cheers. See you later.